Hey guys, uh, welcome. This is the first video of the 2019-2020 uh, school year um, and I'll probably use this video in the future as well. Um, this is video 1.2, unit one, day two. Um, it's all about short answer questions. So um, this is tailored for AP European history and I'm gonna go through the expectations, um, some examples and then how to answer it so that you're aware of and comfortable with the format. You can go back and watch this before any test um, that has short answer questions on it. So first of all, um, the testing format for short answer questions, there's three short answer questions on the test. There's actually four, but you're gonna be writing on three. So I'm, I'm just gonna be talking about that. Each one of the questions has three components. Sometimes it's not super obvious. It could say like, um, identify one similarity and then the, the second bullet point will say identify two differences. So if you look, if you just look at it, it looks like there's only two questions, but there's always three because there's three points per SAQ question. So that's a total of nine. So you can get nine points for the SAQ. Um, you have to answer the first two and they give you a choice on which set you want to answer for uh, question th uh, three and four. So each one of these, um, each one of the SAQs has three components or it's asking you for three different things. Um, the rule of three, anytime you have an SAQ, you have to make sure that you have addressed three things. Um, that's really, really important. Each question will test a different skill and a different time period. So um, the skills are uh, comparison, it could be causation, continuity change over time, which we'll get to later. Um, so those are the, the basic ones. Um, there's gonna be a document in at least one of them and um, you're gonna have to analyze the document. It's very common for them to use secondary sources, which we'll get to later. My approach in this class is um, you're gonna practice so many short answer questions that you don't really have to worry about it. It'll just be like something you do. So that's, that's the plan moving forward. The requirements in order to get points, those three points per question, it must be specific. So if you think of it like on the reading guide in the text box, or on a vocab list, Quizlet, something like that, you, it has to be something specific that you are referring to. It must be explained to answer the question. You can't just say one similarity is blank and that's it, that's not good enough. Um, it must be short. They don't want it to be a long essay. Um, they don't want it to be a, th a full thesis or anything like that, it has to be short. And then the final thing, which is, it seems obvious, but it's really important because a lot of students miss it on this one, is it must answer the question, it must be time period, the content has to be correct, and the context of whatever it is you're writing must be correct. And I have a few examples I'm gonna get through. So um, the SAQ formula, this is, um, other, other teachers use ACE um, as an acronym. Mine is, I, I think of it more, I'm focusing on a specific piece of evidence. So this is how I'm suggesting you write the SAQ. The first thing you do is you restate the prompt. Um, you insert a specific answer, um, it could be a word, person, concept, et cetera. And the reason I, I suggest this is kind of oversimplifying it, but if you restate the prompt, then you know that whatever you're writing about is actually answering the prompt. Sometimes um, you, could get a, you could get a prompt that says, you know, um, evaluate causes of the French Revolution. All you see are French Revolution. And then you end up talking about different parts of the French Revolution, but you didn't actually address the cause. So I, in my opinion, resetting the prompt and then, but inserting something specific at the end, um, that helps you, you know, stay on track. Second thing, provide the definition or explanation of whatever your specific answer is. So um, I, I'm gonna get to some examples in a little bit, but this is where you're showing off what you know in history, the, the definition, explanation. If it's, a, if it's a book, you say like what the book was about. If it's a, a battle or something, you explain, um, who was involved and things like that. Third sentence is you explain how or why this specific answer answers the prompt given. Now two and three might seem like they're the same thing. They're not necessarily, and it depends on the question. So the hints, you're only gonna have one sheet of paper for three parts. So um, what, what the actual paper the college board gives you looks like this. So you would have three different parts. So if you follow my structure, that's nine sentences would be on this sheet of paper. And then there'd be Q2, which would be another nine sentences. So you're not writing a full essay. 
um, students that, that don't practice this, and we're going to practice it, but students that don't practice this on the first part, they write an essay on 1A, and then they don't get to B or C. So you just wouldn't get the points for that. The next thing is indent. So if it's um, indent, so it's clear that you know what, which one you're starting. This is not a requirement, but you want to make it as easy as possible for the person grading. So you want to be able to look at it and say, this is your first part. This is your second part. This is your third part. And if the prompt is something like uh, provide two differences, you would say one difference is, and then the, and then next you would indent on the next one and say another difference is. Um, you want to think of it as throwing a punch. You don't want to wind up, you know, I'm going to hit you and then do it. You just want it to be quick, short, to the point. It's a short answer question. It must be specific and plausible. So if you wrote, um, if the, the prompt was identify one person um, that led um, or that helped in the, the slave revolts in the early 1800s, and you rephrase it and said one major leader of the slave revolts in the 1800s was Martin Luther King Jr., that's, that's not plausible because he wasn't even born yet. So that, that would not get a point. You cannot double dip. That means if you use um, Galileo for 1A, you can't use Galileo again for B and C. Sometimes if it's someone you know really, really well, um, you might think, I'll use this person you know, for A, and then I'll use something else they do for B, and then something else they do for C. That might work, but the specific thing you would have to use would have to be something specific that they did, and then explain it well enough to, to demonstrate that you know um, what, you're, what you're talking about. And you want to show off what you know. So if, if you, you know, say something kind of vague, but you know something more specific, be more specific while not writing too much. <clears throat> it's kind of like Goldilocks. You don't want it to be right too much, but you don't want it to be too short. So again, that's the, that. Here's an example. This is from an actual AP test a few years ago. Um, I, I got this. You can find this online if you want. But um, this is one that has a document. So you would read the document quickly. Um, you read the, um, this is, you know, when it was written, that's important, which we'll get to later with doc analysis. And then here are the, the three, the three points. So again, you might look at this and say A and B, that's only two, but it's two plus one is three. So, um, this is an example and we'll, we'll go through how to, to address documents and answer document uh, based questions later. This, I just wanted to show you, this is what it could look like. So, um, that's that. So here's some, some easy practice that you can do. Um, you can pause the video and practice. Um, explain one specific similarity between August and July. Explain one other specific similarity between August and July. And then explain one specific difference between August and July. So if you were gonna be doing this, you would say one specific similarity is, or between August and July is, whatever it is. Another specific similarity between August and July is, and then something, and you'd explain it following a three sentence format. And you'd explain one specific difference between August and July. Um, here's another easy one that you can do. You can pause it. I'm not gonna spend time going over this. Um, you could also use, um, if you read um, Out of the Flames, you could use that as well. So in conclusion, um, in conclusion, basically, the whole point of this, um, of this, this SIQ in this video is a short answer question on the college board. They're gonna give you four prompts, but you're only gonna write three. It's a rule of three. Each one of these three is gonna have three components, which is a total of nine things you're gonna be writing about. Um, the, the suggested format that I suggest is you restate the prompt, the first sentence, so three sentences per one. So it's, you just remember three, the rule of three. You introduce, um, or you restate the, the doc, uh, I'm sorry, you restate the prompt with something specific. You then provide a definition or explanation of what that specific thing is in the second sentence. The third sentence is you explain why that answers the prompt that is given. If you do that, you should, um, as long as it's accurate and it's within the time frame, you should be able to get a point. So this was uh, video 1.2, short answer questions. Hope that helped. And see you around.